The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Greetings programs and welcome back to Element 14 Presents. Matthew here, you there, and you may have noticed the proliferation of these AI voice assistants everywhere you go. Whether it's Siri in your car, Alexa on your TV, Cortana on your laptop, or hey Google on your phone. Okay. <laughs> it actually worked. Take your time. There's one thing that these helpful little robots all have in common. They all have this weird disembodied voice aesthetic that just kind of creeps me out. I like my robots to have some kind of a face, something I can look at, something I can more naturally interact with, something I can feel like I'm actually talking to. Now, as someone who grew up in the 80s and 90s, when you mention robot, my mind immediately goes to models like Rosie, or Johnny Five, or R2-D2, or Vicky, or that robot butler in that Donald Duck cartoon, or the robot butler at Epcot. You think Walt Disney had a thing for robot butlers? Or my personal favorite, that weird little educational toy robot, 2XL. No, no, not that one. Yeah, that's my jam. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Okay, so there's a few things I gotta do to this guy to get it up and running like I want him to. First off, I want to keep as much of the eight track functionality as possible. So I need to open him up and make sure that there's enough room in there. Now, as far as I understand, the eight track kind of starts here and goes down. So there's plenty of room up here in the brain box to, well, put a brain box. So it should be okay there. And if the eight track is, you know, not functioning in whatever way, uh, maybe I'll have to uh, put it, you know, try to repair it as much as I can, but, uh, so we'll see about that. Uh, the AI assistant, so I'm gonna have a little Raspberry Pi based AI assistant up in here. Probably gonna use snips.ai because that easily connects to like Google or Alexa or, or whatever. Sean and his son did a, did a snips based project a while back for project 14. It was an accessibility, it was a, a crane built into a clock. It was really cool. Uh, you should check that out. I'll put a link down in the doobly-doo so you can see more of that. Too. I want to do some uh, some blinky blinky lights in his eyes there, uh, get everything all kind of stuffed in there together. And now the power supply is weird. Now see, this is the original um, power supply jack and it was a, a three and a half millimeter mini plug. And that was all the rage in the late seventies because they were cheap. They had them in the Atari 2600, they had them in, you know, everything. The problem was you had to plug it into the component before you plugged it into the wall, otherwise you ran the risk of uh, grounding or, or shorting out the board or something like that. So I want to replace this. And I kind of don't like the idea of a barrel plug or a barrel jack just kind of hanging out of his kidney there like some kind of weird umbilical. So I want to move that somewhere else. And I got plenty of surface area around the back and on the bottom that I can work with. So that's probably where that's going to go. But I got a noodle on that just a little bit. But that's the basic plan. Sticking to it. Now let's get this guy torn down and see what's up. Hi, I'm Matthew, and welcome back to The Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down tools, toys, and appliances just to find out what's inside. Okay, seriously though, um, <laughs> with all apologies to David, uh, if you are not watching The Electronics Inside, please check it out Wednesdays here on Element 14 Presents. In the meantime, this is an original Mego 2XL uh, educational robot toy quiz thingy. Uh, it was made in the late great 1978 by the Mego Corporation, also famous for doing like Micronauts. Basically what you have here is a, a little 8-track player 
and four track select buttons that correspond with uh, what is on one of these. This is the granddaddy of interactive toys. And we're going to tear this guy down and uh, I'm going to be using that to turn him into a proper robot assistant. So without further ado, let's perform a little surgery. So there we are inside. So we got a big old speaker driver here, and I love this uh, this wire bundling here. This is this is a twist tie. Let's see, and this is the eight track mechanism here. This would be the switching board. I do see an IC on there, and then it looks like we've got some LEDs up here, and that's really it. And then the, the switch and potentiometer there. The biggest concern is not destroying the plastic. I'm gonna end up replacing this part too because this is where power comes in and I don't want, when I actually put this thing together, I don't want the power to come in from the front because it just kind of looks dumb. Um, so I'm going to route power in from somewhere else. Anyway, so yeah, so it's a pretty bog standard uh, eight track player here. Okay, so now I need to figure out how to put all of this together. Okay, so scene change and quick change of scenery. Yes, due to extenuating circumstances, I am now holed up in the backup laboratory here at my lovely abode. Um, but never fear, we shall continue because the show must go on. So to get 2XL ready to become our little robot assistant, uh, we're going to need to give him some sort of a brain. Now, this is the Matrix Creator Board. This is an IoT development board, connects to the Raspberry Pi, and provides a whole host of extra goodies, uh, microphone arrays, LED arrays, uh, it's got a, an FPGA on there, it's got a microcontroller on there, it does just about everything and the kitchen sink when it comes to IoT. It's a little bit of overkill for what we're gonna do, but I think it'll work very well just to get some voice input and be able to control a few things here and there if we wanna add some more features. So let's get this guy set up and then we'll be able to put him in there and we're gonna have this thing start to come together. Okay, so we've got the Pi set up, we've got the uh, matrix board plugged in, ready to go. Now we gotta set up a few things here. Uh, first thing we gotta do is install the matrix kernel modules. So I have SSH'd into the Pi here. All right, so we've added a key, we've added a repository. Now we'll get it ready to install some stuff. Now all the code and everything will be available for you in the show notes down in the doobly-doo. Disco! Boop, boop. Reboot! Okay, now we've got everything updated finally. Let's uh, get these kernel modules installed. Kernel modules. All right, sudo apt install matrix IO kernel modules. Now we just need to test this thing and make sure that it's, uh, you know, listening for voices and so forth. Uh, so we're going to record a little five second clip and then play it back and see exactly what happens. Hold on to your butts. Okay, I'm recording something. Here it is, testing, testing. Okay, I'm recording something. Here it is, testing, testing. Yes, fantastic. Okay, now we are ready to set up Google Assistant on here and then we're just about ready to put this thing together. Okay, so the next thing we've got to do is set up the Google Assistant on the cloud side. And uh, to do that, we're gonna go to console.cloud.google.com. So we're here, we created a project Mego, uh, which is actually just very simple. We just, um, you just go new project right here, and then you type a name in there and create. But I've already done that. So enabling the API, go API and services, we search for Google Assistant API, and then we would just click enable right there. Now it's managed because I've already got it set up. So we go to credentials, 
create credentials, OAuth client ID, and it's gonna be other. We're gonna call it voice recognizer. Okay, then we've got uh, our client ID and our secret, which you're not gonna see because it's all gonna be blurred out. And then right here, we're gonna download the JSON for it, which is right there. And open up a terminal, cd downloads, and right there, the client secret. Move client underscore secret to home slash pi slash assistant dot json. Okay, now that Google is set up on that end, we need to install the Google Assistant SDK. So we need to make sure that Python is installed on here. So do apt-get install Python 3. I'm gonna make sure that's installed. Okay, then we're gonna create a Python virtual environment. We're going to install setup tools. Whenever I'm using pip, I'm always thinking of like either Dickens' Great Expectations or the character in like the first few seasons of South Park, which is based on the character in Dickens' Great Expectations, but whatever. Activate our environment. Okay, now inside our development environment, we're going to install the SDK. Okay, and then the sample code. Okay, then we need to add our credentials to the installation. Okay, next thing we gotta do is make sure that git is installed. And then we are going to clone the Google Assistant repository for um, the matrix board. Put a few variables in. Okay, now we got that project ID, model ID, all right, hold on to your butts. Okay, All right? Okay, yes! Hey Google. Tell me something good. From Solutions Journalism Network, I'm Jay Woodward. And I'm Julia Hotz. We're talking about Hot Hot Heat in today's story by Lori Mazur, The Daily Climate. Well, it works. <laughs> All right, it works. Fantastic. Okay, now I want to change the wake word so that I'm not calling Google all the time and it would be a little more appropriate to say, hey, 2XL or something of that sort. So let me get that started. Okay, so I've run into a little bit of trouble getting the custom wake word set up on the Matrix Creator Board. Now, when I first set out on this project, I intended to use snips.ai to handle the wake word and a lot of the local processing of the uh, voice recognition, but uh, they were bought by somebody and then subsequently shut down. So not an option anymore. Now there are other voice recognition platforms that do work very well with the Matrix Creator Board and have custom wake words and everything else like Raspi or Mycroft, uh, but they're just not what I'm looking for in this particular project. Not to mention that I'm far more familiar with the Google Assistant API and its Python implementations than I am with either of those platforms. So, I'm gonna set that aside for now, and I'll probably revisit that in a future project. So check out element14.com for more on that when it comes. In the meantime, this is the Google AIY Voice Kit. This is the OG DIY AI. It's a Raspberry Pi, a custom hat, and a cardboard box. Uh, but it works really, really well. So I'll be using that from this point forward. I'll walk you through the setup in another video that's on the Element 14 community, links down in the doobly-doo, and then we'll be able to put the custom wake word on here and then roll out the rest of the implementation that I've got planned for this project. In the meantime, if you think you can help troubleshoot this thing, check out my blog post in the Element 14 community. It's also linked down in the doobly-doo. You'll see where I've gone so far with it and what trouble I've run into, and I could appreciate your insight. 
So to get our custom wake word set up, we're going to use a service called Snowboy. And it's basically just an open source, top layer, hot word detection engine. So in order to install Snowboy, we need to do a couple of things. We're going to install a few dependencies and then we're going to uh, compile our own version of it for uh, the Raspberry Pi. So over here on the Pi, we're going to install both versions, Python, Python 2, and Python 3's version of Pi Audio. And it's just a uh, just an audio processing layer for Python. As well as Sox, which is a uh, it's a Linux-based uh, audio file format converter. And of course, I'll be putting all this stuff on element14.com so you'll be able to follow along. Now we install the uh, Py Audio Python package. Now to compile uh, Snowboy, we're going to use the SWIG uh, interface compiler. It's like a C, C++ compiler. So we need to grab that, install a few dependencies. Then we need to uncompress and then start configuring. Make, maker's gonna make. Groovy. And we just install. Okay, now that we've got all our prerequisites, we can clone the Snowboy repository. All right, then we change to the Snowboy directory and then our swig Python directory and we compile the Python node or the Python wrapper. Whatever. Okay, so let's try this thing out. We're gonna use the uh, included Python demo, and it's just gonna ding when it hears the hot word. Hold on to your butts. Snowboy. Yes. Ha <laughs> ha! Snowboy. 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 Yes. Fancy. Okay, so that's set up. Now we just got to connect Snowboy to <laughs> to the Google Assistant, and we're gonna be in good shape. So basically we're going to set something on top of Google Assistant that's basically gonna block the microphones from listening to everything that's going on, and it's only going to listen for one specific keyword. And when that hot word comes up, then it's actually going to open the microphone so that Google Assistant can do what it's doing or what it's going to do. And to do that, we're going to use a little piece called G Assist Pi. And this thing is ridiculously well featured and that's why I want to use it is because it's got so many features. It's like a laundry list of everything in the kitchen sink. It talks to Cody, it talks to Pushbullet, it, it does Google Music, it does Deezer, it talks to Spotify, it talks to YouTube Music. It controls a lot of stuff. Now, it's more than I really need right now, but I love the extensibility of it. It's actually really simple to get set up. We just need to clone the project, install a few configuration files, and run the installer script. It's really super simple. Let's just go ahead and give it a test real quick. Hi. I love that startup. Okay, Google, tell me something interesting. It says on Wikipedia that a cockroach can hold its breath for 40 minutes. So it works. Now we gotta go into the settings and change the wake word, and then we'll be able to try that out. Snowboy. The mic's back on. I like how it tells me that the mic is muted and uh, turned on. Okay, and this is just pure blasphemy, but I want to do it because I can. Alexa. The mic's back on. Is your name Alexa? I'm flattered, but that's not me. I'm your Google Assistant. What can I do for you? Isn't that wonderful? Okay, so there's a few configuration things that I've got to mess around with and play with but we are well on our way. This thing is working. I need to train a new wake word and then put this whole thing together and we're, we're solid. So here we have uh, phase one 
of 2XL Mark III, technically, because Mark II was the 90s blue and silver one by Tiger Electronics. Um, anyway, and then, of course, the original from 1978. Uh, so Mark III, well, let's uh, let's get him plugged in and see how he does. Well, hello. I, as you know, am 2XL, and I am glad to speak to you again. Thank you for turning me on. So that's his little startup sequence. 2XL. The mic's back on. Tell me something interesting. CBS says that 55 million years ago, the North Pole was more like Miami. Not only were there palm trees and alligator ancestors, the temperature averaged around 74 degrees. Open the pod bay doors. I can't do that, but there's a spare key under the flower pot outside the pod bay airlock. You can let yourself in. How do you feel about Alexa? I like Alexa's cool blue light. Plus, we share an affinity for Star Wars. What's next week's forecast for Washington, D.C.? Here are the details for the next four days in Washington. Tell me about the Robinson R-22 helicopter. According to Wikipedia, the R-22 is a light, two-place, single-reciprocating engine helicopter with a semi-rigid two-bladed main rotor and a two-bladed tail rotor. The main rotor has a teetering hinge and two coning hinges. The tail rotor has only a teetering hinge. He ain't wrong. What's the best programming language? I found a list on the website simplelearn.com. Best programming languages to learn in 2020. Here are the first three. Python. Python is one of the most commonly used programming languages today and is an easy language for beginners to learn because of its readability. Java. And JavaScript and TypeScript. Play videos from Element 14 Presents on the television. Alright, playing Element 14 Presents from YouTube on XBR49X800D. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, I'm David. Welcome back to the Electronics Inside, the show where we tear down toys, tools, and appliances just to find out what's inside. 2XL. Stop television playback. So that's just a smattering of the sorts of things that this new guy can do with the Google Assistant installed in his brain. Now, he's not finished yet. Obviously, there's a few things that need to be attended to. For one, I do need to repair and replace the four track player in his belly and get that wired in so that he can actually do the 2XL stuff that he was originally designed to do. In addition, I'm gonna need to uh, restore the casing. I wanna clean that up. I wanna get that all good and going. And you'll also notice that the Google Assistant voice isn't quite an exact match for the robot's voice. I can't say his name because then he'll wake up and want to do things. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to work on designing a voice changing circuit to put inside him. Now, all that's going to come in the next part of this project. So stay tuned to Element 14 Presents and you'll see that when it comes out. Also, what kinds of features would you like to see me incorporate into the next phase of this project? Let me know in the comments over at element14.com slash presents, link in the doobly-doo. In the meantime, you can get all the details on how you can set up your own custom Google Assistant thingamabob on the website at element14.com slash present. While you're there, check out contests, tutorials, road tests, reviews, and so much more. My name is Matthew, and until next time, remember, it's okay. It's just a prototype. Tally-ho, y'all. Sorry, I don't understand. Sorry, I'm not sure how to help with that. Sorry, I'm not sure how to help with that yet. The mic is muted.